Well, good morning, guys. Thought it was time for a little flea bay edition here. A little, another little cold morning here. What I've done today is, rather than going through individual listings, what I've done is I saved a bunch of stuff to my watch list, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, one is I'm interested to see. I'm finding an awful lot of time sellers will uh, send out an offer at a reduced rate, which I hadn't realized they did quite as much of that here in the past as I'm seeing now. So what I've done is anything that's interested me here over the last couple of weeks, I've just saved into my watch list. And part of the stuff I get offers on, part of the stuff I have no interest in whatsoever other than the fact that I'm interested in, one, what the seller's going to do, or I find there's a interesting product being sold, whether it's... Uh, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether the seller is really trying to screw you over, what the deal is here. So I've got several pages here and I go through my normal listing of things that I look at that I do save in my watch list that I talk about. And it's Atlas Milling Machines, Atlas Shapers, and the Atlas Lays. And then there's some other stuff that I look at, but um, for what I put out here, why those are the things that I, I will look at and what we normally talk about on, on Flea Bay listings. So, I think I just shot a little thing. I've made a couple of purchases off of Flea Bay here. I, I uh, purchased a little 32 tooth change gear from a seller, and it was, you know, over the holiday, so people weren't watching as much or were watching their money, whatever the case may be. I, uh, I talked about it a little bit on a, on a video when I was out at the bench here the other day. But it, uh, I only paid 99 cents for the gear. It's a decent gear. I don't have it in here to show you, but it'll, you'll see it in the, in the uh, other little video when I release it. Um, I, I felt like I got an exceptionally good deal on it. I, the shipping was not as it should have been. And um, I, I feel like I was overcharged for the shipping. Now, I will leave feedback, positive feedback for the seller because I did get a good deal on it and it did arrive quickly. Um, it was advertised as being shipped priority mail. It was not shipped priority mail. It was shipped first class, I think, or something like that, where I probably paid about oh, $3 more than I should have on shipping. So uh, the total cost of it was just under $13, I think, if I remember correctly. So I feel like I got a good deal. I feel that's a fair price for a year. Um, you know, when they start advertising these for $25 on a buy it now and then another $5 to ship them or something, I think we're being ripped off. So, anyway, I'm just going to go through my watch list here. There's several things I want to talk about. There's one seller in particular that is, um, is trying to take advantage. Uh, apparently, he especially felt that we all became stupid over the holidays. I don't know if he thought we were all in a drunken stupor constantly or whatever the deal is, but we'll get down to him here in a bit. And you'll, if you're interested in this in this seller or why I'm pointing him out, he's got about five listings here, which are extremely overpriced. One of them is um, misrepresented. We'll say so, and I'll explain how I know that they're misrepresented. Anyway, um, first one here, there's an Atlas milling machine for $1,200, reserve not met yet. Uh, it's got to buy it now, 1560 Now, I think this has been listed once before, I'm not sure. But this is a, um, an Atlas mill and used model MSC. Let's see what the description says. It is, needs a good cleaning but works well. No backlash and power feed works well. So, look at the pictures, it takes, pays your money, takes your chances. So if we look at the first picture here, this is an MSC. We see there's no switch box or switch or switch box cover in the proper location for it. So in and of itself, um, maybe not a big deal. It, uh, it has another switch on there, but we just got an empty hole here. If we look down below it, there's a plate, some sort of an identification plate. And I don't believe this is, there's a good enough picture of this to where you can see. These are typically a um, military plate from war production where they were sold to the military and they've got their ID plates on them with a number, you know, some sort of a reference number or something. Um, so this would have been, you know, military issue, Army, Navy, something like that. Um, this has the, I, I'm going to consider this the later style door hinge. Um, the earlier machines had this little boss for this hinge cast into the casting. 
looks a whole lot nicer, nice clean installation and everything. Um, this I'm sure was cheaper to, to produce and easier to produce because there would have been a fair amount more machining on the casting itself to get that, that set up. Now my MF has the has this plate that's cast in. The other machine that I have uh, has a bolted on hinge or has that's the way it was set up. Um, we'll see how that ends up. But anyway, this machine is pretty grungy looking for your $1,200 or whatever it is. There's the first picture. The second picture we look at it, there's no guarding on it. It's missing both the, large, both the upper guard and the, the side guard. You know, this machine probably would have had the later style guards that had the, had the larger one-piece guard that encapsulated the, the uh, entire top portion and the top pulley, and then it would have had a, what I'll consider a half cover on the, on the bottom that swung out of the way. So that's the way that goes. This machine's got quite a bit of corrosion all over it, and yes, it probably would clean up, but this is going to be a complete restoration. Uh, it's got the holes there for the, this is where the coolant mounting assembly mounted on there. Um, something very similar to the uh, lead screw supports on the lathes. Um, very similar to that. Took a half inch shaft through them. So doesn't have either of the proper top caps. It doesn't look like there. Handle appears to be broken off here. Not sure. This I don't consider this a good buy and I believe this has been listed once before. So, same picture. Now, see, we've got a switch on this on this motor itself down here, and this is a Dunlop motor. I think they showed a picture of it later on here. Um, this machine's pretty ragged. It does have a have a arbor. It's got the arbor driver with it. Got the overarm support, so it's got some valuable pieces on it. But the condition it's in is, I don't consider this to be a good buy. But yeah, it's got the arbor support, which means it's a later style. Got the straight out um, attachment point here, and got the one of the later style uh, arbor support castings up here that's got the bolt holes in it to bolt the arbor support to. Got a reproduction manual, who knows whose manual that is. Got some slitting saws it looks like there. Now this rotary table, I don't know whose rotary table this is, it's a decent looking little rotary table but it's not Atlas, you know, so if we're looking at originality why it's not there. Got some somebody's hold downs here for it. There's either the arbor that's on it, this may have a second arbor. So there may be some some good pieces here but there again the price of admission is too high. So. That's where we're at there. If we go on to other things, what do we have here? Now this is interesting only because it's been on here for quite a while. This is from a seller that's got a milling machine cross slide casting, an M1-5. I'm not even going to bring this up. The only reason it's still in my watch list is when I was searching for a cross slide casting for on my second mill that we're going to be assembling why I was looking for one of these castings. Um, this one's listed at $799 or $79.99 and $785 shipping. And I had actually made an offer on this and the seller turned me down and that was what three or four months ago. So he's had this for several months now, still continues to relist it and it still has not sold. So vintage belt guard pulley metal lathe milling machine atlas uh, number 10F722. Okay, who's selling this? Let me look, let me look, let me look. Okay, nobody that I recognize, a lot of, a lot of feedback there. Uh, for sales of vintage metalworking machine belt pulley guard is unbranded that I can see. The only maker's mark is the casting number 10F722. The guard is 19 inches long, it measures 10 inches wide at the widest section. The measurement between the hinges is five and a half inches. There are scuffs and scratches, there are some dents, some dents and dents. There are no cracks or repairs. And this is an Atlas guard. Let's bring this up. I believe this is an Atlas guard. I'm sure this is an Atlas guard. This is one of the safety guards that Atlas built. You don't see a whole lot of these. I believe I have one of these, and I believe this is for the vertical countershaft lays. This is for the 10S. And I think these were probably produced for uh, primarily for school use when they didn't want their, people didn't want their little children sticking their hands into the belts and losing their fingers, their arms, their 
pans, whatever the case may be. So these pretty much completely covered. This was the this was the side guard, and I like I say I believe this is for the vertical counter shaft. They built both a vertical and a horizontal, and then they built a top cover for the top belts too, and it pretty much replaced the original um, guards that came on those on the lathe, and. Um, I've talked about these before in a flea bay edition because somebody had one. And this is just pictures of the of the uh, guard itself. Um, the problem with buying them these this way is these also had an inner guard on them that protected the inside too, and it actually clamped onto the onto the um, spindle housing or or something on there. I don't remember. Like I say, I still have to drag mine out and, and take a look at it. Um, but if you don't have that that inner mounting bracket, you have no way to accurately mount these. And it can be reverse engineered, and at some point I may go back and look at mine, depending on how much I continue to do with Atlas stuff. But um, And this is, I think they wanted $50 for this 49 and then probably shipping on it. Um, it. It's a fairly decent price for the guard, but you don't have everything to make it work. So... Um, buying it for the sake of buying it and wanting to mount it in it and it made access to belt changes and things like that really clumsy you know it was it was um it was a slow process but there again they wanted them for a school now this latch is not factory obviously i believe these had some sort of a little uh spring tab that went out very similar to what you see on the on the uh, top covers for the milling machines, on the um, Atlas Shaper doors. I believe they had a little sp tension spring that, that went in there and, and locked it in place. And I believe that's what held these on, these closed originally. Um, so that's not original. Other than that, it's not a bad looking guard, but it's really kind of useless in this, in this configuration. So yeah, forty forty nine ninety nine and another twenty two ninety six standard shipping. See that shipping is actually probably not bad. That would I believe fit in a large flat rate box, so that can be shipped that way, and they're about twenty bucks. Although as a side note, I see that the post office is going to uh, raise their rates here in the next few days here, sometime in January. I think I saw. So I don't know how bad they're going to screw us there. They've gotten their deliveries gotten terrible for the most part and uh, service has gotten really bad and yet they want to charge us more so here's some there's some other atlas parts that I've saved here but nothing that's really really noteworthy now here is a uh, lathe chuck uh, $150 or a buy it now $250 plus $35 shipping And this is listed as new. Listed as new in the box. Let's see what the description says. There's only a couple of things that stood out to me. Yeah, Atlas Craftsman Lathe Chuck, new in the box, made for a six inch lathe. It is not used and abused. Now, is it brand new? I guess you pay your money, it takes your chances. I see a little bit of few little stain marks on it. It's got the original cardboard box that's been been beat around. It's been sitting in somebody's drawer on somebody's shelf for years, of course. Um, the thing about this chuck is I, I think this is way overpriced for what these chucks are. And these are a 4-inch chuck. This is a 4 jaw independent chuck. This was sold with the Atlas or the Craftsman Lays. Now, there's the first picture of it. Um, just a standard four jaw chuck. We go to the next one. There again, this is a standard. These were made in England, got the key with it. Um, I see just a little bit of staining and everything. It's nothing I would dink this chuck on for because it is relatively new anyway for or unused. Um, other than the fact that it's way overpriced. You know, if this was being sold for $80, it'd be a it'd be a decent buy and it'd be worth putting on your machine for 250 or even 150 that's too much money the thing that does stand out to me about this chuck is um and it's got it's a threaded chuck for i think they're one in ten is what i believe they are for the six inch um 
the thing that stands out to me is it, it, it does have the integral threads in it. All of the ones that I've seen, and I have one of these four jaws, this badged Craftsman, um, it has a back plate on it to match, and it's got four screw holes in each of the, well, someplace in here, I guess, is where they are. Um, for countersunk screw holes that screws onto the back onto a backing plate from the front. So this is the thing that stood out to me. I don't really remember seeing one that is has the integral threads. I'm sure I must have, but uh, doesn't stand out to me. It's just, and that's the only reason I flagged this one is just because it's not um, it's not threaded or it doesn't it's not drilled for a backing plate drilled and countersunk. What else do we have here? I've got about five pages here on my watch list, but none. That's not all Atlas stuff. Um, three Atlas Craftsman 101 10 inch, 12 inch metal lathe, carriage, cross slide, gib screws, and nuts. These are used. $19.99 with free shipping. Well, it should be damn free shipping. You need four of these, so you're only getting three of them. These will be a slotted head set screw, and they're threaded 1032. You can build your own. That's the reason I'm pointing this out. Um, 1032, you can use a slotted head. You could convert these to an Allen, you know, if you're wanting utility rather than originality. And the dog point can be easily turned on them. You can take a full-size nut and turn the shoulders back. And if you guys want to see a video on that, why well, leave comments in the, in the comment section below and we'll go back and uh, it won't take long to produce a little video showing just how easy it is to turn those. You just grab you some standard nuts. We use them as a jam nut set up on the on the lathe, or you can thread them and then put put a jam nut on there while you turn turn your dog point on there. Not a big deal at all. Good little shop project, you know. Good skill builder there. And um, same way with the nuts. All you've got to do is leave your jam nut on the outside, thread it onto one, turn your little relief on there, and I believe a full size nut will turn down to give you that little recessed area and pretty much like original. So there you go. Well, that pictures are all the same. These look to be in good condition, but you're gonna get $20 to, to him plus free shipping for three of them and you're still short one. Um, I would imagine big box store, local Ace hardware, those are probably about 75 cents a piece would be my guess. Um, and then your nuts, you're gonna pay, what, eight or 10 cents a piece probably from from the big box store or your local Ace Hardware. So for less than five bucks, you can turn you a, a complete new set of gib screws. Yeah, nothing, nothing spectacular there. You know, simple machining to get those. Okay, now this one intrigues me. And I saved this only for this reason. Atlas Craftsman 101 10 inch 12 inch metal lathe countershaft motor four step pulley, three quarter inch bore. $69.99 free shipping. Now, this is a seller that's been around a while. You know, they know what's going on. We're going to, well, let's, what's the description say before I get too carried away here? <clears throat> 101 10 inch 12 inch, <clears throat> excuse me. Metal lathe counter shaft motor four step pulley three quarter inch bore three inch four inch five inch and six inch in good working condition, but has scratches, signs of use, and surface marks. Please view all the pictures to see what's included. Okay, let's look at this little puppy here. This is a fine little pulley. Several things to stand out and, and to note right off the bat. This right here has been inserted. I guess is the nicest way to put that. This has been bored out. There's been a steel insert put in here because this, this bore and everything would have all been die cast in here. So it's been bored. You see a few little chatter marks along the edge, which neither here nor there. I mean, that's not going to affect the utility of it. But it has been bored and had an insert. looks like a steel insert pressed in there. I'm assuming it's a steel insert. When you look at these, you also look at these marks right along here on the one side of this pulley which looks to me like it has been riding over against the counter shaft assembly, the guard, something on this section only, which means it's not running true. Here's another picture. You can still see the same thing. Insert in here and you can see all these wear marks or these rub marks on this outer edge. 
and when you look a little bit, you see a little bit of pulley markings, not even all the way around. You know, it looks like we're getting belt contact there, but maybe not so much up through here. Another picture, same thing, not showing you anything different. There it is from the side. It's chewed up a little bit in places, kind of looks like along here. So, I mean, normal scraping wear and tear, but this this is what stands out to me, both this and this inner bore. When we look at the back side, you can see it's been inserted here. So we have that, that bushing runs all the way through, or that repair runs all the way through. So there was a problem with this pulley. It was damaged. Something happened. They wanted to change bore size. Who knows what the deal is from what it originally was. So it's been bored out, and they put that insert in which if it had been done true to the world and properly would probably be a decent repair, but it looks awful thin on this side and awful fat on this side. And you still got the same amount of material on, on both of these. So I would guess, especially looking at the other markings on the outside, nice and thick through there, through that part of the bushing and thin here, this has, um, this has been bored and inserted crooked. So this is going to do quite the hula dance as it goes around, and they still want 69 bucks for it. So there you go. Pays your money, takes your chances. Be aware. These people will screw you. Like I say, this is a seller that's been around, should, knows what he's selling. You know, he knows if it's been a couple counter shaft, bra vertical counter shaft brackets for, I'm not going to go back and look at. Now this one is not Atlas, but this is interesting. Milling machine vise, and I talked about this in a flea bay edition before. Um, this is a six inch vise. I felt it was an imported vise, and I think I probably talked about it in the last flea bay edition. Now, I'll try and put a link up in the up in the description up here. Um, I don't believe this is a USA made vise. I could be wrong, but the thing that's interesting about it is when it was listed and when I kind of reviewed it, it was being sold, or well, the asking price was $4.99. Okay, I said that's a that's really a ripoff. You know, I mean, you can buy a real vice for four ninety nine. So it didn't sell. So it got relisted for five hundred and twenty nine dollars. They want one hundred and thirty two dollars more to ship it, of course. But they want five hundred twenty nine ninety nine for it now. Was when they relisted it. So I saved it into my watch list, and it's expired now. But I got a special offer from the seller where I could buy it for three ninety nine. So we know this is way overpriced. We know this is it should not sell for five hundred and twenty nine dollars and another hundred and thirty six hundred and fifty dollars to get this piece of crap vice into your into your little hands. You know. People people think we are stupid. We they think that we have become stupid over the holidays. So that's enough of that. What else do we got here? There's a this is another one, vintage Atlas Metal Lathe Mill Shaper Milling Machine Counter Shaft Assembly. And this has been listed, it popped up under Atlas stuff. And this is a brand new, oh no, this is a seller that's been around for at least a little while. Um, and, and it's, what's the description say here? Vintage metal lace shaper counter shaft assembly, good use condition with normal usage wear and age, has surface rust, bully spin, will lead shaft polished up in oil, does there are a bit stiff to spin, arm moves, pulleys and shafts will lead oil, does this, let's see. Atlas. All the numbers have an end before the parts pieces. Counter shaft assembly. Unsure exactly the machine type this is off of. Lathe, mill, shaper, grinder, etc. Cast iron construction made in USA. Uh, a high quality and great looking antique Atlas counter shaft assembly. Gate, great piece to restore. They want a hundred bucks for it. Ninety nine, ninety nine, ninety nine, and twenty two ninety five shipping. Um, no, this is not a. Atlas Pressworks part. This fits on not the mill lay shaper. This is nothing that Atlas builds as far as I know. Um, when we look at this looks like some sort of a clutch assembly to me and I'm not sure the application or exactly how it would have been implemented. Um, it seems there needs to be more for this to work as it's intended. And from looking at it, and we'll scroll through the pictures and I'll tell you why I know it's not Atlas Press Company. We've got a motor mount here. So we've got a motor here and some sort of a, going to be some sort of a pulley I'm assuming off of that. Um, although there could be a 
direct drive coupler of some sort and when this was moved back or forth that would disengage engage or disengage that this is your engagement portion here and that's that makes sense to me if that was a direct drive something off of that your motor shaft came out here and went into the end of this pulley into some sort of a coupler why you can engage and disengage and then it would drive with a belt whatever you were you're operating so that's probably how it how it was intended to work. It's an interesting piece of machinery, but it's not for a Atlas Press Company machine like we would, would normally work with. Atlas Clutch, Newark, New Jersey, USA made. This is some sort of a clutch assembly for some application. I don't know what it is, but it's not for an Atlas Press Company machine. Yeah, we've got a, a friction clutch is what we've got. So there's going to be a friction clutch off of your motor that engages in that. and. Um, engages and disengages. So, interesting piece of equipment if you have any application for it. But not really applicable to anything that we're doing. Al 7B Shaper milling machine pulley S7-124 6 and a quarter inch pulley 3 quarter inch bore. There again, this is from a seller who's been around $79.99 in free shipping. Um, this is the pulley that I've actually been working on the pattern, one of the patterns for, for this pulley itself. I'll probably, well, I glued the, my little, um, my little riser blocks on yesterday for this. Um, and of course, if I just wanted the pulley to have a pulley, it would have been cheaper for me to spend the $80 to a seller and do that, but that just rubbed me the wrong way. So, for a pulley, I'm not spending 80 bucks on a pulley. If I'm going to spend big bucks, it's going to be on something that's more substantial than a little Zamac pulley that I can maybe produce an aluminum. We'll see. could potentially eventually compromise the pulley. I don't see anything really wrong with the pulley other than that. It's a decent looking pulley, but uh, we'll build our own. There's a Craftsman Atlas Lay 6-inch 101, 475. The problem with these is you, they want you to pick them up, basically. Um, so that's going to eliminate a whole lot of buyers but that's where you're going to find a fair purchase is if something's local in your area that you can go and pick it up and realistically you're probably not going to find it on eBay you're probably going to find it on Craigslist or um, Facebook Marketplace or one of those local uh, local venues where you can uh, where you can go and look at them and pay your money and, and buy them. Now this is a Six inch atlas. Craftsman six inch lathe in good working condition includes everything he picks. Um, and I guess they've got a video work and I'm not gonna go and mess with that. For a six inch lathe for four hundred and eighty bucks, if you're gonna spend that much money on a six inch lathe, this might not be a bad candidate. You know, I mean who knows how much wear is in the bed, how sloppy it is, all that good stuff. It is relatively complete, it is American iron. Um if I was looking for one to restore and it was local to me, I might consider it. There's a view from the back. It's got the counter shaft assembly. The motor doesn't really impress me. The motor and the switches, you know, that may not be everything that it's cracked up to be. Um, doesn't have a whole lot of tooling. You've got a three-jaw chuck there. Looks like it's got a tool holder motor wiring and stuff like that looks pretty ragged. The rest of the machine, it needs to be gone through, but it's not a, you know, not too beat up. Yeah, that motor wiring looks pretty ugly. Got some sort of a switch with no knob on it and a taped up, taped up electrical plug. So the motor's no, no great shakes at all. Um, otherwise, it's not a, not a bad looking machine for what it is. The, the chuck's probably a little bit overkill for it. A little bit of gearing there, 101, 7301. 
I believe this is probably a little bit later model laid just from the feet. It seems to me the, and I could be wrong, but it seems to me the earlier six inches had a little more um, rounded foot, like the earlier ten inches and stuff. Um, these are, you know, with these sharp edges type of thing, or fairly sharp edges. I think those are later model. That's a later production. And it's kind of kind of ugly looking, you know. It's what it is. Looks like that handle is it broken, or is it? Looks like the cross light handle is broken off. Although I'm not sure. Yeah, it's missing the missing the knob sticking out there. Well, nothing spectacular, but it's probably something worth considering. From the looks of it, the bench doesn't come with it. It shows other pictures with it not mounted on the bench. So, um, yeah. Okay, now we're getting into a seller that I'm having a real problem with. Here is a, a 7-92A Atlas Shaper Vice. $520 plus shipping. Now, this is a decent looking, they want $2190 expedited shipping. So who knows what that is. That will fit in a medium flat rate box for $20. Bucks. Now, who knows if that's actually what expedited shipping, and I'm not going to look at it. Um, the seller has, and this is the last, I think, seller that I'm going to, or the last items, there's about five of them here, that I'm going to look at here. Um, S792 A Atlas Shaper Vice, no brakes, repairs, or surprises. Well, it's a surprise if you're going to spend 520 bucks and another 22 bucks to ship it. This is not a bad looking vice. Um, it's not chewed up, it's not, you know, it's ugly. It's, it's dirty and grungy in the paint what's on there is kind of flaking and it's it's ugly looking it needs to be stripped down and redone fair bit of corrosion on the on the unprotected parts and stuff this would clean up and be a decent vice but not for five hundred twenty dollars now one just sold here a while back and it was a milling machine vice that sold for two hundred sixty one dollars and there was I think three bids and it ended up being two hundred sixty dollars I don't know if they're shipping or not but anyway um, from what I've seen, the shaper vices or the milling machine vices seem to be a little bit harder to come by than the shaper vices. So here's a full size picture of it. You know, it looks pretty decent. All in all, it's not a bad looking vice at all got a handle, that this is a Fairmont handle, um, but it's been drilled and tapped for a set screw, which normally you want those to, to be able to come off. But anyway, the um, milling machine vices, in my experience, are a little bit harder to come by, and they only and that one sold for $261. So why in the world would you give $520 for, for a shaper vice that's not quite as, not quite as rare, I guess, is the milling machine vices. And none of them are rare. You might have to search for them a little bit. But this one's got the uh, all the bolts. Oh, they've got washers under the bottom side. This is this has been pulled off and they've just slammed bolts back in there to in whatever configuration. Fairmont handle. Which I think these handles were all basically the same. Some of them you see stamp Fairmont, some of them you see stamp Martin, and some of them have no stampings at all. I think I've got two of them that have no identifying markings at all. I'll have to go back and look at that and see. But um, there again, nothing, nothing spectacular here for the for the money they want. Okay, there's the first one. There's the first overpriced item. Now we go to the second overpriced item: Atlas 7B Shaper Door S789A. These are all off the same machine. They're all the same green. Um, buyer says, "Well, yeah, they came off of a functioning machine." Well, there there were back to the strikes against them from my end anyway because why were they parted out but they want three hundred dollars plus shipping now I haven't produced any doors for a while although I started working on patterns and just again and haven't done them I've done guards or I've done these doors for years I don't remember what I was charging for them I think they're in that hundred dollar range which realistically an original when you buy one you shouldn't be given more than fifty bucks for it I don't think um, 
I'm there again. I'll get back on pattern making for that, but I haven't had the call for them. Um, if somebody really needs a shaper dory, let me know, and I'll get back on the stick and get one cast up because we can we can sure as hell beat three hundred dollars. Anyway, let's look at this one very quickly. Eight fifty five expedited shipping. Um, I won't go to the descriptions on any of these except for the very last one, which is not off of a shaper, but. We look at the pictures, there's a lot of corrosion on this. This, this machine was grungy when they started jerking it apart. Um, the plating is rusted through on the, on the emblem. So these were originally nickel plated, I'm assuming, on here, and they had the red background. Once you see them start to discolor like this, why that plating has is, is, uh, been compromised, they're rusted. You, know, you can see rust on the rivets there. Um, this thing's a this thing's a rat hole. So it does have a knob on it, although it's got grunge or rust showing through it too. So now this clip here they put with it. This is not the clip that goes with this door at all. This is actually the clip that holds the large shaper door or shaper guard closed. Um, this end back here mounts on the machine itself and the, the little nubbin that sticks out on the bottom of the large shaper guards that has a rivet a, a steel rivet inserted into it, it snaps into that. So this actually goes to the to the large shaper guard. Yeah, you can see the see the corrosion and stuff. That that plating's gone. So this this emblem's pretty much junk. Um, there was original colors, I'm assuming, on that on the door. And this is a clip that goes with that door. So it snaps onto the onto the opening. Now this is interesting. I've seen these, all of the ones I've seen before this one, this area right down here, this little boss that hooks onto the door runs full length out toward, to the edges of the hinge. And that's the way I've always done my reproductions is it's been pretty much full length out there. So is that a casting change that at some point they made or is that someone's modification? Um, it, when I look at them, they probably don't need to extend fully out there. It probably, because all it does is hang over the edge of the of the main body casting, and then it's aligned by the outer perimeter, and then usually they'll set in place. They don't even need this little latch. But that's interesting to me. Other than that, standard, standard guard, nothing spectacular there, but it should be... So that should be a $50 guard, $50, $75 at the outside if you really think you need one. Now we come to the 7B Shaper cover. This is a small one, and I think, I don't remember what I, let's go look right now. Let's see what I'm charging for them. $135 is what I quote for the small Shaper guard for a replacement. $135, and there's probably... Um, another, what, $18, $20 in, in shipping is my guess. I'm not going to look that close. doesn't matter. Um, I don't know if I have a shaper door up on the website or not. I was going to look here and see. I know I don't have it on the Atlas Machine Shop website. I may still have one listed on the Hills Gun site. The um, Hillsgun.com website is going to be moving directly, so it may be down for a little bit. I'm going to migrate it over to a different service. Yeah, I don't have a shaper door listed. But this guard, $135 is what I've got them listed at for a replacement. Um, this guy wants $400. This is, this is a ripoff. He thinks you, he thinks we've all become extremely stupid over Christmas, Christmas and New Year's. So, it's an okay guard. It will clean up all right. Now, one thing that I will say about it is when we look at this area right here, this little mounting bracket, I've seen a couple of them mounted this way over the last couple of years. Before that, I've never seen one with this mounting bracket. I've always assumed that that was added separately, and I think it probably still is. There's a little bit better picture of it right there. Um, it's screwed in from the inside out. I've never seen, never seen that before. You know, the last little bit, and it looks like from this, it's been on here for quite a while. 
but um, I don't believe that's a factory atlas mounting. I believe that's something somebody's put on to do it. Yeah, for one four hundred dollars, this thing's just a grungy and crappy looking. Yeah, you can see the see that bracket again. I, I do not believe those are factory. Okay, so there's the next one we're being ripped off over. Now we go on down to a Atlas 7B Shape Recover Original S7-101. This is the larger guard. $400 plus shipping. Um, you know, $400 and then we want another $59.80 for expedited shipping. Um, this is one of those sellers I have absolutely no respect for. And he's got 100% good feedback. I would not purchase from him. Now this guard does have the mounting bracket, which this was a cast iron mounting bracket, and there's a better picture of it on down here. Um, actually, let's open this up. So this does have the mounting bracket right here. Um, and that was originally a cast iron mounting bracket. I have produced these in aluminum times past, and I think they work okay. You know, they work okay with my replacements. Now, the original guards were cast iron, too. Um, if you hung a cast iron guard off of there over time, I... I think it would hold up, but I would still be a little hesitant with it. I, I think the cast iron guard in this application, or the mounting bracket, is a little bit better than the than aluminum replacement. Although I do, can do an aluminum replacement. This is the rivet that I talked about. This is a steel rivet. It's a wear rivet. And that little clip that was in the other, with the shaper door, why it would extend up over the top. It would come up here, go out the back, and then back down the outside. And that captured it and retained it in place. Yeah, here's a, here's a picture of this bracket mounting bracket. Um, not a whole lot of stress on it, not a whole lot of strain. I think it would be fine, but if I was mounting an original cast iron guard, I would hopefully get the bracket that goes with it. There's a better picture of the, the rivet, that, that clip. Like I say, it comes out here like this, big flat over the top, and then comes in on the back side to lock it in place. Got the knob with it which doesn't look great. None of the rest of the parts look great with it either. You know, I mean, this is nothing that's, that amounts to anything. Now, it does appear to me, well, I, I can tell for certain, this pin has been bent, which means that it did not align properly on the machine it was on. I would assume that somebody's whacked that with a hammer to try and bring it back into alignment. Rip off. Rip off, rip off. I will avoid this, this seller like the plague. And I believe, the, yep, this is the last one. Same seller. Oh, there is an, an interesting one here, but it's only about a pattern that I'm making. Atlas Press Clausing Chart Posters Machine Slay Tools Decimal Formula Set. $300 buy it now plus shipping. <laughs> okay, let's see the description here. Atlas Press Clausing Chart Posters Machinist Lay Tool Decimal Formula Set. These are new and undisplayed. I got them from Kalamazoo, Michigan, where they came from the factory. They've been in a container since new, made of sturdy, sturdy paper, stored in a tube since the 1950s. Bullshit. 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 Okay, 16 by 22 for the Atlas ones. Clausing one is bigger than double the Atlas ones, but I failed to measure it exactly before I repacked it. Okay. Um, and of course I'm going to say that's too much money to start with even if it was a truthful listing made of sturdy paper stored in the tube since the 50's no bullshit it's not now let's look at these posters okay good overall view of the posters you know I mean they're they're good clean posters I mean I've got no complaint there other than they've been stored in a tube for however many years and it's not since the 50's but they've been stored in a tube since then. They've got a curl to them. You know, you're going to, if you want them to lay flat, you have to roll them the other way, put them back in the tube for another 70 years, and then they'll then they'll lay flat. You know? So, anyway, first overall picture. Lady cutting tools. Now, I think I have not all of these, but I think I have all of these blue Atlas um, posters. I could be mistaken, but I think I do. I've done, um, I, I think, 
there needs to be a good reproduction of these done that's less than $40 a piece, like some of the sellers are selling them for, and I've been kind of working on that a little bit at a time. Anyway, lathe cutting tools. I believe I have that one. There's the decimal equivalents. Maybe I've got one of those. 63V type thread dimensions. I do have that one tucked away someplace. I got a bunch of these hanging on the wall out in the shop. And thread forms and formulas, I've got that one. Now this is the one where I'm calling bullshit. This is all tagged clausing. If we go back and look at these, look at the the history of Atlas. Um, In 1950, Atlas purchased Clausing, and they manufactured the 100 and 200 series only on V-Ways. Okay, that's, that's when Atlas purchased Clausing, was 1950. But, 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 when you go on down and read a little farther, it wasn't until 1965 that the company name changed from Atlas to Clausing Corporation to get away from small woodworking image more into the industrial field. So, the name was not changed to Claus Incorporation until 1965. Well, this poster is tagged clausing. So, this poster would not have been even produced until after 1965 or 1965 at the earliest if they, if they produced this poster then. So, looking at the condition, if we want to take the buyer's word for anything that um, this these posters were all stored together, were all put together and, and produced together and stored and he bought them this way as a lot, then these posters were not produced until 1965 or later. So, and the seller should know that if he's being honest about it. This is a seller that's been around forever. He's overpriced us on a whole bunch of parts right prior to this one and now he's trying to pass off some posters that probably were not produced until the late 60s, maybe early 70s. Um, probably in the late 60s, I would speculate, is when these were actually produced. And he's trying to pass them off as being originals from the 50s. And I'm going to call bullshit on that. So um, this seller's just proven himself that he's untrustworthy to buy from, to even try and buy from. Um, so, you know, if you're selling if you're selling shaper parts off, he's got, he has one, two, three, four shaper parts listed, and they're all add-ons basically to the machine. He's trying to get eight, nine, ten, eleven, um, sixteen hundred and twenty dollars plus another couple hundred bucks shipping, hundred and fifty bucks shipping for a few parts that the whole machine should be sold for a thousand type of thing, you know. So I avoid these guys. If they're not trustworthy enough to, you know, to have things at a reasonable cost and do things, you know, at a fair, at a, uh, in a fair business dealings, why, I'm going to avoid them. Anyway, that's pretty much all I've got with Atlas stuff. There is some reproduced uh, support towers for a counter shaft on the older delta wood lays and and I've talked that I wanted a counter shaft assembly they want $215 and another $16 shipping for new manufacturer um, counter shaft supports and this is these are some of the supports that I was looking at when I started designing the patterns for mine um, and they're made in the People's Republic of I'm trying to not purchase from for the most part so I still do you know I'm not gonna I'm not going to sit here and lie and say, yeah, I buy nothing imported from from our third world Asian company, this country that's trying to take over the world. Um, I do still purchase a fair amount from them, but I don't feel the need to buy support castings, even though they are in cast iron. I don't feel the need to be in cast iron for what I want to use them for, but uh, I should pretty much finish up my 
my pattern sets today, I think. And I will be casting those before too long. But anyway, that's what they look like. I'm not going to worry about putting any numbers, any names, or anything on mine at all. Um, for right now, anyway. So, I'll finish up those patterns today. But Anyway, that's what I've got for my little Flea Bay edition today. Hopefully you find this interesting. Um, hopefully a little bit enlightening. And, uh, you know, comments, suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. There was one. One I was going to share. Nice original Atlas Craftsman 6618 lathe headstock milling cutter drawbar. $79.95 and $17.65 shipping. I don't think that's a bad buy. But, 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 and we can look at the pictures very quickly. There's what it is right there. There it is from the end now. I kind of wonder if this is original because it looks like it's had a handle on here and probably been ground off. Um, the drawbar, to my knowledge, I don't believe, I believe it was just a round hand wheel. So I'm not sure if this is actually all original or if this is somebody's assembled thing. So, and, and I'm not going to beat anybody up over that. I don't care. What I found interesting about this is if you need one of these, let's read the description. If you need one of these, nice original Atlas milling cutter drawbar for a 6 inch Atlas 618 or Craftsman 101 series lathe. Drawbar is 5 and 5 inches long to the spacer, 6 and 7 eighths inch total bar length without spacer, 3 eighths inch diameter, 16 thread per inch, thread length is 7 eighths of an inch. Hard to find accessory and fine order is shown. Now, if we're looking for shop projects, and when I saw this yesterday it occurred to me, let me find my drawings here. I did a video on building your own Atlas drawbar, and then I show my drawbars that I sell too. So the drawbar drawing is readily available. Overall length, well not overall length, but length back to the shoulder is 6 and 13 sixteenths. Drawbar uh, length is, okay, total bar length without spacer is 6 and 7 eighths of an inch. So we're within a sixteenth of an inch of what these dimensions are. So I think there's that much play in them. Um, thread length, they, they show a 7 eighths of an inch. The uh, print shows 1 inch thread length and then the spacer length. If you need a drawbar, go back and watch that video on building a drawbar that I did, and I'll try and remember and throw a link in here for it. The dimensions are going to be exactly the same back to the larger diameter. Um, and there again, that goes back to Atlas wanting to design stuff to use the least amount of different SKUs that they could. So the turn down length of that 3 8 inch shaft, um, as long as you've got that 6 and 7 eighths or 6 and 13 16 and you make your spacer to match your drawbar, you can very easily build your own drawbar. Now what you're going to do for a handle, um, whether you find an original handle and, and, um, and um, sleeve the inside of it, whether you start with a larger piece of bar stock and turn it down for your threads and your 3 8 inch length and then leave a large enough diameter to hold onto your hand wheel. Um, either way, but that's what that is, is those are the same dimensions. Um, which tells me that the Atlas drawbar is going to be very similar or at least the same length, through length, as the Atlas 6 inch lathe. And I found quite a few parts that are interchangeable between the 6 inch lathe and the milling machine. So. Atlas compartmentalized that stuff to use as, use as few different parts or as few different processes as they could. So a lot of the things are going to be interchangeable, but I found that interesting. So same dimensions as the milling machine drawbar that's pretty commonly available to all of us. 
and um, you know if we've got our six and seven eighths from here down to the down to the end and then an inch of threads or seven eighths of an inch of threads and then our hand wheel and then we can build our spacer to whatever length we need to get the to get the proper thread engagement of whatever we're whatever we're pulling in whether it's a drawbar whether it's a collet you know whatever the case may be there so anyway just found it interesting another easy little workaround and if we need to build one at some point in time why we may very well do that that'll be another good little project so all of this stuff is is pretty simple when when we get right down to it and with that I will end this hopefully you guys have a good day hopefully you found this useful entertaining and um, you found something that you can utilize in your shop comments or suggestions leave them in the comments section for me below if you haven't hit that subscribe button and you find this useful I'd appreciate it help continue to make this channel grow and as always guys thanks for taking the time to watch